Hi, my name is Jen and welcome to week 36 of my thesis vlog. There's only 40 weeks in this project, so that goes to show you how close we are to the end and how stressed I am and why this video is going to be very short and very janky because I'm just going to be filming my monitor like a jerk. Sorry about that. But um, if you remember last week, which you didn't, you don't probably because I'm probably posting this like weeks after I posted that one and these are all probably happening weeks after I actually finished the film. Um, last week I kind of talked about how Miko was starting to do some basic blocking animation and I was hoping I'd be able to find a couple of people who are actually animators who could take a couple of shots off of our hands so that we're not left doing everything. Miko's doing blocking animation, but I'd say he's doing a little bit more than that. I'd say like blocking plus, only because we need to make sure that if in the event that we can't find anybody, that we, what we had in the film as it was, like what he was able to do with the limited animation skills that he has is, is passable for the program. Because sometimes with thesis, all you can hope for is passable. And for character animation, for me, that is definitely not a thing I could do. So thankfully he's experienced enough. So he's been kind of going in and getting them to a point where, again, if we can't find somebody, it's okay. And if we can find somebody, they can just kind of plus it a little bit more and we're good. Thankfully, I was able to get two of my friends to help. Um, asking for help is tough because people have not a lot of time. There are plenty of people who, you know, stare at a monitor and they animate all day. The last thing they want to do is come home and animate more. And I totally understand that. So of, of a bunch of people I asked, two people were able to actually off offer to take on some shots. And I'm very thankful to them. One of them is our friend Jonathan, who was an animator at Blue Sky and is now a freelance animator in the city. Uh, my other friend Adam is someone who I had gone to SVA with. He graduated in like 2013 or 14. Uh, he was a year ahead of me when I first started in the program and he's an animator and he had some time in between jobs as well. I think he can only do maybe like three or four shots. So again, if someone can take on a single shot, that would be better. And the good thing about this too is that because they're both professional animators, um, I kind of told them that the quality that we were looking for was basically like a spline plus or a TV quality animation. And thankfully they kind of knew exactly what that meant. If you don't know what that meant, so if you've ever watched like Nick Jr. shows or um, like Disney Jr. like CG animated shows, you'll kind of notice that the quality of the shows are good, but they're not as good as a feature animated film from a DreamWorks or Pixar or Blue Sky. And the reason for that is because the compact schedule of, of TV animation production, it, it's crazier, it's so much more condensed than the four years that it takes us to make a, a feature. Um, TV operates on a much faster schedule, much smaller budgets, but I'm not saying it's not good. Um, but you'll just notice that it's just a different standard. And it's still passable, there's still a style to it, the characters obviously still have personality and everything. I'm not saying anything about the quality, I'm just saying like the general... I don't know how to even explain it, because again, I'm not trying to say the quality is... is it's just a different standard, basically. Um, and that's what I'm looking for here, because we, again, we don't have time to put in for you know, feature level quality character animation. I would love that and I'm sure some shots are gonna get that because I think Jonathan is somebody who probably would wanna do that. Also, cause it's exciting for an animator when it's like a brand new character and a new rig that no one else has ever played with and you really get to do, like set the tone for the character's performance and everything. So I'm sure he'll pull some really cool uh, performances out of the character anyway but that helped a lot. So the goal for me, now that I was able to find some people who are going to be able to do some work for me was to make sure that everything that I'm working on remotely like works for them, that we're able to have this pipeline for remote work. And the thing that really helped with that is SVA uses the Google, like the G Suite. So during the two years I was there, or like while you're a student there, you get access to Google Drive and with your email address and then you have unlimited storage. I think once you graduate, they probably, they have to cut that off because that's crazy. If you see over here, I have, my film is like 70 gig and that's just like everything backed up on here. So my entire film lives in Google Drive and we have it also stored locally on several different machines, but because it's a remote project, because there's multiple people working on multiple computers in multiple locations, everything comes back to this Google Drive, which lets us sync things, and then it automatically syncs with our, our desktop backups and stuff. And 
it just allows us to make sure that everybody has the latest version of the characters, of the rigs, the latest versions of the shots as we moved from previs and you know to layout and then we assembly and we added the props and then we started adding textures to the props and the, you know the animation and the lighting and you know the whole the whole shebang and to do that we had to just basically make sure that it was good for the remote guys so when i basically like had to onboard a new person onto the, the project um i would send them an email and it would basically give them like a set of instructions. I would share the whole project with them and it was basically like, here are the pro folders that you need. And we kind of just made sure that those folders had everything that they needed. So the main ones of course were, why can't I find? Oh, assets, geez. So the characters of course were the important part if they are character animators. So it was making sure that they had these at these four files so the the maya file like the character file for the boy and the tiger as well as the user interface for the the rigging setup that we used again we used like the anim school like kind of like their picker engine and that's like a free to use tool that it takes some time to set up and thankfully miko knew how to do that because i certainly didn't know how to do that before this and we made sure like they didn't access the archive because that's just where we stored all the previous versions of the characters. And so you can see in here, we just have like lots of different ones as our rigor one would update the models as well as the characters. We would add them to this folder and then we would always make sure that the latest version had the same name so that when we were working in Maya, Maya wouldn't get confused if there was suddenly like a new version number. So we never worked with version numbers. We would just put the existing one into the archive and we would rename it, you know, whatever number it was just for tracking sake. And then the new one would just become that old name, that existing boy name and tiger name. And that was, again, when we reference files in Maya and when, you know, you have paths that point to things, you don't want to have to be updating those every time because that defeats the purpose of referencing and, and just automating as much as possible. 